Hey everybody, welcome back. It's a new day and an old project. Stay tuned for another installment of the X231 Restoration Series. So, now that I have the gear train in the back end pretty well sorted out, I can turn my attention to the transmission. And if you remember way back from part 26, I installed this pinion shaft, counter shaft, whatever you want to call it, down in here with no gears on it because I wasn't sure of my pinion to ring gear setup if I was going to have to be shimming any bearing races or changing anything. So I didn't throw any gears on there just in case I had to redo something. Luckily, that all came out right where I needed to be, so we can throw some gears down there. Here are the gears again from part 26. I uh, already did the comparisons on these. There's that spacer I made back in that video. If you missed it, go back, check it out. But hopefully in this video, I'm not gonna have to be re-re-re-engineering anything. I can just do some assembly and actually make some progress. So to get those gears on that shaft, I first need to get that taken back out of this housing. I did have some preload on these bearings, so this nut was cinched down a bit. I just need to get it taken off. Now to disengage it from that front bearing. And get it the rest of the way out of the housing. And before the assembly begins, I'll give you one last brief rundown. You're all familiar with this pinion shaft. It is the production version because the prototype one was destroyed beyond repair. Uh, main difference again, the um, prototype shaft did not have this snap ring groove here and this here. That is why it utilized the spacer to go between these two gears. Just make note of that for now, once again. I don't know if that's going to cause me some issues when I go to put the upper sliding gear shaft in in the next video, but... Just keep that in the back of your mind for now. We might be revisiting that once again. Um, but as you saw in part 26, we have uh, the first gear that will go on the shaft is the first speed gear with this thrust washer and a snap ring, which will hold the assembly behind this groove right here. After that, here is the fourth and fifth speed sliding gear. Just goes in this area here and kind of free floats. We will then have another snap ring that has to go on, engage this groove here. Then the third speed gear will come on and then take the spacer that I made in part 26. Boom, it'll take up that space between these two snap rings. And finally, this is the second speed and reverse gear will go on the front. And then one last snap ring goes in that groove there, fixes the entire assembly. And you're definitely going to want, when you do this, very good 90 degree snap ring pliers. The 90 degree part is crucial because it is such a tight compartment in there and very little working room hardly any space with this front wall and you're going to have to have a good 90 degree plier to go in there because you can't afford to attack it from any other angle and honestly guys i don't know how i'm going to make this entertaining because it's like i said such a tight area and my both of my arms and hands are going to be down in here fighting with snap rings and washers and gears and trying to get everything to engage in splines. I'm not going to be able to hold the camera. I don't think I'm going to get much for good views of what's going on. I'll do my best. Probably going to be some swearing involved too. There has been every time I've attempted one of these uh, gear set assemblies down on the bottom of one of those cases, but I'll just do the best I can. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, first piece going in. I'll lower this first speed gear in. And yes, I have a rag down there in the bottom because, you know, paint chips. Things that make me twitch and keep me up at night. Protect all my work I've done up to this point. There we go. Feel a little better about that. And now the shaft can be fed through the gear. And this is an easy one because uh, there's no splines in this one. Just a bushing. Get it on there just a bit. And get the thrust washer on. And guys, from here on out, just assume that everything that needs a coating of oil has a coating of oil. Um, you guys always uh, you always catch everything. Never can uh, get anything past you. So just because I didn't mention doing it doesn't mean that I didn't do it. But got the snap ring loaded on the players. These are the nice ratchet style that will hold adjustment. Start this ring on at least until I can get it in a groove. And I know the shaft is not going to fall out. 
and we don't want to advance it much more than that because I won't be able to get gears on if I don't leave myself enough room. That ring and washer should be enough to hold the shaft in place while I go get the next gear. Fourth and fifth speed sliding gear goes on next. And these ones, well actually every gear from this point out has splines that have to be aligned and started. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. I can advance this a little bit more now. That's about as far as I want to go. Now we just play the game where we keep hopping these snap rings over grooves until we get everything fed in as far as it needs to go. Make myself a little bit more room, there we go. Now, get on it here. There we go, skipped it past that one. Get that a little bit further on. As far as, uh, as, far as I want to go right now. Now, the second snap ring. Get that on there. Come on. Disengage, there we go. Followed by the third speed gear. I'll show you guys something real quick here. Just like a production 445 tractor, the hub face that extends forward always goes to the front. So I'll be sure to position it properly and get him started on the splines. Now I can throw the spacer on there. And finally, the second speed and reverse gear. And this is where things are really going to start getting difficult. It's been fairly easy up to this point, but this is where you really start questioning why you do things like this. Why is it fun? This part is not fun, but if it isn't fun, why do you do it and still call it fun? You know, deep philosophical questions like that. So. All the gears are in there on the shaft, but the shaft itself is still quite a ways out of the housing. So to get that the rest of the way in, there are a whole lot of snap rings and grooves that have to be navigated and all kinds of positioning to be done in here. This is where it gets tedious. And right here is an instance where I have to jump the snap ring that is supposed to hold the first gear all the way to the end of the shaft. I need to jump that snap ring past a groove and I've strategically made a gap between the fourth and fifth sliding gear and first gear to get my 90 degree snap ring players down in there and engage it with the ring and hopefully be able to spread that and get it leapfrogged past that, um, that groove. I've had to do this several times already. I'm not gonna show you every one of them, otherwise we'd be here for an hour, but this is where you just need to remember where all your rings are and all the grooves, and as you feed that shaft in, you have to be leapfrogging rings past grooves as needed to get everything where it needs to be. And if the visibility is poor, again, I apologize, but just not enough room to have the camera down in the gearbox and my hands and the gears and the pliers and everything that needs to be there. Helps a lot to have long reach pick tools to guide these rings. Here we go, got it past the danger zone. Release the pliers now without letting it slide forward. Otherwise you're back to square one again. Let's see if I can get disengaged from it now. Without popping it back into that groove. Really fun stuff here guys. It takes a while. Gotta have patience. I got one leg out. There's the other. Good. Didn't mess it up. All right, guys, newsflash pinion is still a bit out, but I've got the most difficult ring in place, and that is this front one way down here. 
That is the most difficult one to position because of everything else that has to be worked on first. But I have finally that ring and this, oh what is it again, second speed and reverse gear are finally where they need to be. The sleeve is where it needs to be. Third gear is where it needs to be. So I can move the whole assembly forward now, finalize everything to the rear. See if I can get first gear back where it needs to be. Got a thrust washer here, yep, right there. Use the fourth and fifth speed sliding gear to try and push that snap ring back to where I can see it. There we go. I think I can pretty well seat it in with this tool. There we go. That is snapped in. Everything engages. Everything spins. Looking good. Now to draw that pinion nut up once again, create some preload. I'll tell you what guys, I'm liking it. Everything fits just like it should. Rotates nice and smooth. Engage that gear to there. Just like I want it. Boom, boom. And nothing hits, nothing scrapes, everything fits well. The spacer is working out just fine that I made up there. Like I say, I don't know if that's going to cause me a problem in the next video when I fit this upper sliding gear shaft. I will explain my concerns with that then. Just keep that in the back of your mind. One thing I want to show you though is just how crazy close they run that first gear to that case boss right there. I know that's less than 20 thousandths clearance on those teeth, but I have pulled and pried and I cannot make that thing contact. That's just how they run these gear cases. Um, it's also why you want to have good preload on the shaft. I've got a nice, nice rotational torque on it right now, easily meets spec, and that keeps this whole shaft centered on its axis so that it cannot float around at all and allow that gear to get any closer to that boss. So transition to the front compartment here. And I've got excellent alignment with the cotter pin hole in that castle nut up there for that front bearing so I can secure that in place when I'm ready. Um, as is usually the case with these prototypes, everything's always up in the air, everything's always a question mark. So I'm going to leave that cotter pin out of there for now, just in case. I still have a few concerns with this, namely fitting that upper sliding gear shaft through here. It also ties into the torque amplifier unit, which runs in this front compartment. So I'm once again gonna take the conservative route and just leave my options open before I completely tie this down and consider it to be in place for good. Like I said before, the upper uh, sliding gear shaft is gonna go in next in the next video, but that also ties in with the torque amplifier unit. Things get very busy and very complicated on this upper axis, so that's going to be the subject of the next video. But um, I think I'm going to wrap this one right here. I've been out here for three hours tonight getting those gears fitted on that shaft. I know it doesn't look like much, but all went in just like it should. It fits like I want it to. I didn't gouge or nick or uh, scratch any paint. That's the best part, right? <laughs> so uh, tune in next time, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back here again.